I have a Ryobi 40 volt pack here, lithium power. The uh, first thing you need to do to open it up is take the screws out obviously. You're going to need a Torx bit, one of the ones with the security Torx which has the hole in the middle. This is a T15 I believe to remove these screws. But if you haven't got the Torx bit, what you can use is a flat blade screwdriver fits. You just got to find the right one and they fit and works pretty good. So once you get it open, you got to crack it open. It's uh, the seam runs through through here. So I usually just kind of pull this back a little bit and get it loose. And then once it's loose, I open up the other end just by pulling on this part. You might have to get a screwdriver in there and pry a little bit, but be careful because there's electronics in there and uh, the batteries, of course. And once you get it open like that, on the other end, we just need to peel the peel it off there, and so you'll have the Ryobi sticker will still be intact. The button still works, of course. This one actually was dead. I've already taken it apart and charged it partially. What I'm going to show you is normally when it charges, it uses the two outside legs to charge it. This is your positive, this is your negative. But the problem is once the pack determines that, once the board determines that your pack is bad, it uh, disables charging. It just lets it discharge and then it's dead. So there's two kinds of boards. I've got a couple boards here that I'll show you. This is the kind of board that's on on that last pack and you can see there's two FETs, two field effect transistors there. And those are at this end here where the connector is. It's right here. And uh, there's another older style that only has a single FET. Now if you've got the one with the dual FETs, one of the FETs is used to for charging and the other one's used for discharge. So it turns one on. Um, this is one that it turns off to stop you from charging. And that's over here. So what we can do, this is one that won't charge and I can show you with a, a board so this is what I use for charging a lot of my 40 volt lithium batteries. It's a, it's got a constant voltage and a constant current adjustment. So I set it for 41 volts about, and I set the current limit to one amp. So even if the batteries are really dead, it only draws, it only allows it to draw one amp. Uh, but it's, it stops charging. Well, pretty much stops charging. Uh, once it reaches that threshold of 41 volts, there's still a little bit of leakage voltage. I'm not sure what, what's happening there. There's a light here that will be red when it's charging and green when it's fully charged or if it's not charging. So I'll just plug this in. And this is plugged into a 12 volt power supply. And you can see the green lights on indicating that there's power there. Try to get everything into frame here for you. So yellow is negative. Red is positive. And you can see that that light isn't coming isn't changing to red so it's not charging this pack even though it's almost dead and what's happening is the fat on this side is not turning on this one is is on so it'll discharge it this one here that allows it to charge isn't turning on so there's a trace and if i zoom in i'll try and point it out to you actually i'm just going to disconnect this charger for a minute is this is the this is the pin that is the gate for the FET and when you apply power 
It needs, I think, two volts for these FETs to turn on, two volts minimum to turn on. This one here is actually, if we measured it, it's at, I measured it at 10 volts. So what we're going to do is there's a trace between this pin and where this resistor is supposed to go or capacitor. We're going to cut that bridge in that trace right there. And to cut it, we're going to use just a knife. Now this one has a little bit of, this, this uh, battery has a little bit of power in it. So you have to be very careful if you short something out. You could uh, cause sparks, could be very scary. <laughs> so we want to cut this trace right here. Yeah, right there. And I always cut from, here, I'll zoom out so you can see. I always cut, like get the knife in here and then pull this way because there's nothing else for me to hit. If I go back this way, I'm going to be cutting other traces. I'm actually going to be, this is the, the negative rail. So if we cut this way, there's nothing really else to hit. So it's a little bit safer. So I'm going to try cutting that again. Sometimes I have to go over it a couple times to get that trace to cut. Uh, where is it now? So that's with the trace cut. I had to go uh, off camera and make sure that it was cut using a a uh, loopy, Mr. Loopy I call him. I think that was actually the name of the packaging that when I got this. It's a 10 times magnifying thing that I can just pop in my eye and see a little bit better. Maybe somebody with better eyesight can do it without that, but if you don't get something like this, 10 or 15 X is good. And uh, I've actually used this to put on my camera. So you can see that trace is cut. So, now even with that trace cut, that's going to stop that, uh, the gate from being grounded. But when we apply power, let me fire up my power supply here. Ground. 40 volts. You can see the light is still green. Um, sometimes we can get it just by using the resistance in your finger, you can get it to turn on. You notice that turned red. We're getting, we're basically stealing some voltage from the other side here and making that, making the gate of the second FET, the charge FET turn on. And once it's on, it seems to stay on. So if I connect and disconnect the power. It does seem to stay on. I've even discharged the battery a little bit and it seems to stay on. But the reality is, is that it's going to be an unknown state. You need to put on a resistor. So I have a resistor here. This is a 51K ohm. You probably need a 51 or 48K ohm, something, something around there. You want it nice and high because you're just, you're just getting the voltage of the gate of the second FET to turn on and stay on. And what we're going to do is we're going to solder it on, constantly hold the gate of the charge FET on. So we're going to steal voltage from the other gate. So both of those FETs are the same. So we can go to this tab and to this tab. Tie those two tabs together and just with the... 51k ohm resistor and that'll keep that gate on what you're doing in effect is you're disabling the the charge controller the bms from turning off stopping the the battery pack from getting charged so there is a little bit of a concern there so you never want to charge these packs without being attentive of, to what what's going on there but uh, i've seen other people I saw one guy, he suggested running a wire 
this is your your negative over here this is your negative leg of your of your pack and he suggested soldering to that and then running the wire across this way and then between this screw and this this what this this solder piece here to run the wire in through there and then run the wire out the back I think that's a horrible idea because you're running a negative this is the positive rail so if there's any heat in that uh, in the solder the insulation on the wire if it comes off or rubs against here and makes contact that's 40 volts right from right from the negative leg to the positive rail and this is the other end this is the positive this is 40 volts plus and then this is your ground over here so you'd be running them together so if you're going to do something like that what I do actually if I'm charging my batteries and I don't want to do this modification I actually take a screwdriver and loosen this screw off a little bit take my alligator clip put it on like that this is all the negative rail so it doesn't matter if this all touches this is all touching anyways just put on an alligator clip like that that'll ground that and then I can do my 40 volts to there and you can see that the charge light is on so that's a way of doing it without without cutting that trace and without doing any soldering and uh, all I've done is lifted up this screw a little bit to give my alligator clip something to clip onto and there we go charging but if you want something so that you can charge it with the cover on and everything uh, you can cut that trace and put a 51 ohm resistor 51k ohm resistor across those leads I'll uh, get this ready and I'll solder it on just so you can see what it should look like. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of solder on the two pads that I need to put solder on, I mean that I'm going to be soldering to. So those are the two pads that we're going to be soldering to. This is the one that we cut the trace to and I'm just gonna tin the wires of my so I've pre-bent a resistor just so that it's gonna fit on there so I just pre-bent it so that I can just hold it in place soldered on but I'm going to tin the resistor a little bit just so that it sticks a little better have a little bit of flux here That was hot. <laughs> so I've got a little alligator clip here that I so I can hold this without burning myself again. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> We're going to put the resistor on like that. So we have to be careful because there's power on this one. switch over to this one I just have to be able to hold that down to the board
Sorry about the smoke in your eyes. So what we've done is we've tied the two gates of the two fets together and now I'm just going to cut this off and by doing this we're ensuring that both gates are going to be on. Well if this gate's on, this gate will be on. This one will still be, the discharge gate will still be controlled by the circuitry so hopefully there should be a a shut off if it if the batteries start to get too low it should still be able to turn off the FETs but the charged FET will always be on or at least on whenever this uh, this one's on and we'll verify that by hooking up the power again here's the negative one the positive one And so we can charge it with these two because that resistor is keeping the second, the charge FET on. Sound like I'm repeating myself. So, in theory, we should be able to put the cover on. So there's the cover on, the seam is nice and, nice and tight. I haven't put the screws in, but we'll hook up the power. There's your negative. And there's your positive. And we got the red light indicating it's charging. So that's one way of doing this. If you don't know what you're doing, though, I recommend not doing this. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you later. So this is the battery that I modified with that resistor. Uh, we're going to test it to see if the it only has a little bit of charge in it, so it's almost dead. We'll, I'll show you how I'll show you how uh, it still shuts off the the motor to protect the battery for discharge.